Hi everyone, it's Eric Goins from Automate Intelligently here. I just spent an hour and change making a booking app tutorial. Um, I'm going to put this up on Nodalo, my uh, Dalo course, as well as um, probably on Udemy so people can buy this uh, specific build. I want to just give you an overview of what I built and how it works, because I, I know this is one of the most commonly asked uh, templates that, that people always have questions about. So I'm going to go through this um, first with the database collections and then three kind of workflows here. And then I'll talk to you very quickly about what I would change and do based off of some of the use cases, um, because there's not just one booking app. And actually, you know what, let me start with the use cases because that will really dictate how the rest of this is built for you. And as I'm going through this, I will try and call out how I would do things differently based off the use cases. So the first type of booking app would be a small business that wants to make times available for their customers and have a mobile app to do that. Think about a dog uh, daycare or a hairdresser or um, maybe a counselor, um, an accountant, somebody who has some available amount of time um, and they're just creating slots, just open time, that's it. The second use case is that maybe you are a gym or um, a university or some type of education center where you have classes. Um, and those classes uh, might be in different locations. They have different dates and times. The classes uh, are different as well. So there, you know, it's not just not every time slot is created equal per se. And then lastly, you have kind of a marketplace of that second item. So think about a class pass where businesses would join this. They would open up. Um, their slot to make their slots available, and then people can book those. And again, it's not just a slot, though, because not all of them are created equal. So let's look at our databases. This is where I really get started on, on everything. We have users, businesses, time slots, calendar, and orders. Orders is simply a, a log of payments. So this, uh, don't think about this very much. This is just whenever a user creates a payment, um, it creates an order. The big, key, the key thing here is that users can have, can have one business, okay? It's one to many. A business can have many users and that is the admins of the business. So in our onboarding process, users can uh, join that business uh, or create a business. We also created time slots. So these have a capacity so that you can limit the number of people who participate in a class. Um, you could default that to one based off of your business, um, or it could be you know 100 and you can count down from there. We have other things like a name, status, description, location, time, a price if you want to charge for the, the class, and a calendar. This is really my secret sauce here. Uh, basically, the calendar, um, which is just the all of the available times, um, lets you bulk add items to time slots, but depending on how the businesses want to add things. So going through our workflow, a user or a business will sign up here. If it's a, everyone will go to this uh, loading screen, but businesses will go to create a business form and users will go straight to the home page. This home page at the top has a list of their bookings, all their time slots uh, that are upcoming, a horizontal list of the businesses. And then they can see all of the available classes that are in the future or time slots in the future. We built out an entire time slot detail screen. So if they were to click on any, if they were to click on this list or this list that have the time slots, they'd go over to that time slot detail screen and they could book. Um, if there's capacity, if there's no capacity, it will get a, note, a modal notice. And we would push them to payments um, if they were supposed to pay per class. 
I'm going to come back to payments at the end because it, it really is the most complex. For the businesses, we went through the loading screen to the create the business, and then we have a home screen. Um, these buttons were just tossed in here, so hopefully you have better UX than this. Um, but this is a list of all of the businesses' upcoming classes. Um, there's a Stripe Connect button here, so they could, if you're running a marketplace, you could use Stripe Connect here. Um, we have a way for the business to edit the business profile, and then also a way for the business to add classes. We have a business, we have a, if the business were to click on any of the classes that exist, they can go and view all of the people in the class, manually add users to the class, see all the class information, remove users, and cancel the class if they wanted to. We also have edit time slot um, or edit the um, the class if they, they want to. And we have a full business profile page with all of the businesses classes linked out here that users can book or cancel. Um, lastly, kind of on this, when, when creating time slots, there's really two ways to do it. The easy way, um, that works really well if, if you're not creating in bulk or you don't need to, is just to add a form and create a time slot. That is obviously the super easy way. The second way that I did here is I created um, a calendar that just has a, a list of all the times by hour. And I just used the switch here. And when a business flicks the switch, what it does is it just creates a time slot with that time. So that's an easy way to, to make it for businesses to kind of bulk add time slots um, so they don't have to manually go in and do that. The downside to that is they can't really edit um, the information from that. You probably could put another form in here that um, every time slot that's created um, you know, uses some of the information from, from elsewhere, but we just bulk created times. And that works really well if you are, um, if all of the time slots are standardized and you, they, they don't differentiate, they're not different class types um, or fitness things. Uh, it, it, you know, they're just all haircuts or all dog grooming sessions. Lastly, um, we talked a lot about payments for those different use cases um, because there's just so many ways to do it. So the easiest, simplest way is that whenever a user wants to book a class, you just charge them a flat amount for that class. We also talked about that if the business um, wants to charge a dynamic amount, you can put a price with that time slot and you can charge that price to them and then you can use the marketplace with the business's stripe id and pass that on to them there's also ways to uh, have more of a class pass experience so um, you could have the users um, pay a fixed amount per month and that gets them a certain amount of classes and then every time they book a class um, that uh, you know counts uh, against their, their credits for the month or whatever. And we talked a lot about using a Stripe uh, subscription component for that because that'll give you that easy monthly billing feature. So I hope that is, uh, it's a lot very, very fast here, um, but I hope that was useful. And if you have questions about how to build a booking app, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me or look at one of the courses if that's of interest, but hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of what's possible in Adalo uh, for those three different business types.